Physio Control is pleased to present the following in-service video on the LifePak 300 Automatic Advisory Defibrillator. We will discuss an overview of the LifePak 300's design, its operation, manual mode operation, ECG monitoring using conventional ECG electrodes, documentation using the code summary critical event record, display messages and troubleshooting, general testing and maintenance, and how to prepare the LifePak 300 after every patient use. This video only provides you with an overview. You must refer to the operating instructions for complete details on the subjects discussed. The LifePak 300 can be configured several different ways depending on the options chosen when it is purchased. For simplicity, we have chosen to show one configuration in this video, a LifePak 300 with a strip chart recorder, ECG waveform display, and voice prompts. Your device may not have the same set of features shown in this program. The LifePak 300 is called an automatic advisory defibrillator. In a cardiac arrest, it has the built-in intelligence to recognize ECG waveforms and recommend whether or not a shock is advised. The LifePak 300 is sophisticated, yet simple and easy to use when the operating instructions are understood. The LifePak 300 receives a patient's ECG signal through large defibrillation electrodes. A microprocessor-based shock advisory system analyzes this ECG and recommends whether or not a shock is advised. Viewing the LifePak 300 from above, you will notice that all operating panels are located on the front of the device. The panel on the handle contains the main power switch, display contrast controls, code summary button, manual mode access button, and printer button. The panel next to the display contains two buttons whose functions are indicated by the message shown on the display. Because these functions vary, there is no permanent label. The top display button delivers the shock. This button is active only when a push to shock message appears. A tape deck that records your voices and the patient's ECG signal is located to the left of the display. To access the tape, push the arrow indicator located on the front. The printer is located at the back left. Beside it is the battery release latch and the removable sealed lead acid battery. Behind the display is the patient cable connector. Located on the back is the battery charger port and the ECG out port for transmission of ECG. And finally, the bottom of the LifePak 300 features an incline bale that can improve the viewing angle if the unit is placed below eye level. Recently, we made a video to show the LifePak 300 in action. I'd like to show that to you now. Obviously that was a dramatization, but let's take a closer look at this code situation. You'll see some important features of the LifePak 300. The patient in this case was in ventricular fibrillation, the most frequent initial ECG rhythm in a cardiac arrest. Ventricular fibrillation can be described as an electrical and mechanical chaos of the heart. When in ventricular fibrillation, the heart muscle quivers and therefore does not effectively pump blood to the body. The most effective treatment for ventricular fibrillation is an electrical shock or defibrillation. Defibrillation can stop the chaos of ventricular fibrillation, allowing the heart's natural pacemaker to start an organized perfusing rhythm. 
The time from onset of ventricular fibrillation to defibrillation is a major determinant of defibrillation success. Defibrillation is more successful when it occurs within the first four to eight minutes of a cardiac arrest, depending on whether or not effective CPR has been initiated and is ongoing. When our EMTs arrived on scene, they immediately began basic cardiac life Sir. support procedures. They tried Sir. to arouse the patient. He's not breathing. No response. They checked his breathing. No respirations. After giving two breaths, they checked for a pulse by palpating the carotid artery, allowing at least five seconds to check for a pulse. If the patient has a pulse, maintain the airway and support no respirations as needed. In this case, though, they found no pulse. Remember, you should only defibrillate a patient that is unconscious, has no pulse, and is not breathing. It is essential that you assess the patient using basic cardiac life support procedures before you use the LifePak 300. The first step is to place the device beside the patient. Next, remove all clothing from the patient's chest. The other rescuer continues performing CPR. Turn on the device by pushing the on button. Remove the fast patch disposable defibrillation electrodes from the storage area. Simultaneously begin a verbal report. Identify yourself and the responding emergency unit. Briefly describe the clinical situation, including where you found the patient, his estimated age, and your patient assessment. Open the defibrillation electrode package and remove both electrodes. Next, attach the patient defibrillation cable to the electrodes by snapping the cable ends onto the electrode posts. Here you see the EMT wiping the chest dry with a towel or discarded clothing. This skin preparation is essential for effective electrode adhesion. If the patient has excessive hair, you may need to shave or clip the hair before electrode placement. Peel off the protective backing from the electrode. Peel slowly, as you see here, to prevent damage to the adhesive gel. Place the electrodes firmly on the patient's chest in the standard anterior-anterior defibrillation position. This is also known as the sternum and apex, or lead to position, and is shown on the electrodes. One electrode is placed below the clavicle and slightly to the right of the upper sternum. The other is placed at the apex of the heart, slightly below and to the left of the patient's nipple. Make sure each electrode adheres firmly around its edges to the patient's skin. Now the LifePak 300 is ready to analyze and, if needed, defibrillate. At this time, stop Analyze. CPR and make sure that everyone is standing clear of the patient. Push the lower display button labeled Push to Analyze. You will hear a stand clear voice prompt. The system takes from six to nine seconds to analyze the patient's ECG. Do not touch or move the patient or the device during this time as this may inhibit analysis. If a shock is indicated, the LifePak 300 will automatically charge to 200 joules. As you can see, the display's charge bar and accompanying ramp-up tone indicate the degree of charge. When fully charged, you will hear push to shock and a continuous tone. The top display button is labeled push to shock. Our EMT loudly announces, okay, I'm, clear. I'm clear, you're clear, clear. everyone clear, Everybody shocking clear. now, while okay, verifying that everyone, including himself, is clear of the patient. Then he pushes the push to shock button to deliver the shock. With energy transfer, the message energy delivered and the number of shocks delivered appear on the display. Push the analyze button again and remain clear of the patient. Shock up to a total of three times or per authorized medical protocols. Depending on your unit's configuration, it may automatically charge to 300 joules on the second shock and 360 joules on the third. The decrease to 200J option that appears during charging to either 300 or 360 joules is provided to adhere to the AHA guideline of using 200 joules in the event the patient refibrillates. You may never use this option. Please refer to your local protocol for guidance. After the third shock, check the patient's pulse. If no pulse, perform CPR for one minute or per local protocol. Check for a pulse again and if no pulse, Push the Analyze button and deliver up to three more shocks, if advised, for a total of six shocks or per local protocol.
If at any time a no-shock advised message appears, the LifePak 300's voice prompt will check remind you to check the patient's pulse. Check for a pulse. If no pulse is found, perform CPR for one minute. And if still no pulse, reanalyze. After three no-shock advised segments, repeat an analysis after every one to two minutes of CPR and proceed according to authorized medical protocol. As mentioned earlier, if at any time a pulse is found, maintain the patient's airway and continue to support respirations as needed according to authorized medical protocols. At the end of the code, the EMT pushed the summary button to obtain a summary of resuscitation events. This feature is valuable for passing along information to advanced life support and emergency department personnel. This is an overview of what it takes to operate the LifePak 300 defibrillator in a code situation. Let's review the highlights. Check for level of consciousness, breathing, and pulse. If unconscious, no pulse, and no breathing, place the device next to the patient and turn it on. Attach the electrodes to the LifePak 300's defibrillation cable and attach the electrodes to the patient. Stop CPR and push the push to analyze button. Stop all patient motion during analysis. If a shock is indicated, stand clear of the patient and push the push to shock button. Reanalyze the rhythm. If no shock advised is indicated and there is no pulse, perform CPR for one minute. If no pulse, reanalyze the rhythm. If a pulse is found, maintain the patient's airway and continue to support respirations according to protocols. Do not use the LifePak 300 where there are high concentrations of oxygen or in the presence of anesthetics or other flammable agents. Do not use the LifePak 300 on patients weighing less than 80 pounds. If the patient has a functional implanted cardiac pacemaker, the LifePak 300 may not advise a shock regardless of the patient's underlying cardiac rhythm. An algorithm based on the American Heart Association's recommendation for the use of automated external defibrillators can be found in the pocket located on the top of the defibrillator. The LifePak 300's display is a backlit liquid crystal display. Liquid crystal displays, or LCD for short, perform differently in different lighting situations and at different viewing angles. If you need to improve the display's viewability, the contrast may be adjusted by pushing the contrast up and down buttons. When the advanced life support team arrives, manual operation can be accomplished by pushing the manual button. Manual mode operation means that it is not necessary to perform an analysis prior to delivering a shock. The LifePak 300 will not analyze the patient's rhythm while in manual mode. The operator has full control over the energy selection, charging, and delivery of shocks. Manual operation is only for authorized personnel trained in rhythm recognition. Your LifePak 300 can be configured with the manual mode operation disabled. Refer to your specific configuration, its operating instructions, and your authorized medical protocol for further details on how to operate the LifePak 300 manually. The LifePak 300 can display a patient's ECG waveform using conventional ECG monitoring electrodes. Follow authorized medical protocols to identify situations requiring use of these electrodes. To use conventional ECG electrodes, remove the defibrillation cable. Grasp the outer lock collar, twist it counterclockwise approximately one quarter of a turn, and pull straight up. Now install the three lead ECG cable by first lining up the two arrows on the connector. Hold open the connector slide door with one hand and push straight down on the connector with the other hand, orienting the connector as shown. Twist the outer lock collar clockwise to lock in the connector. As with the defibrillation electrodes, prepare the patient's skin by wiping off the chest prior to electrode placement. If necessary, shave or clip chest hair. Attach the cable wires to the electrodes as shown. Attach the white connector to the patient's upper right torso, the red connector on the patient's lower left, and the green connector on the patient's lower right. As a safety feature, the LifePak 300 will not analyze or defibrillate 
through conventional ECG electrodes. If analysis or defibrillation is needed, you will need to connect the defibrillation cable and apply the disposable defibrillation electrodes. If the push to analyze button is pushed with ECG electrodes connected, the LifePak 300 will remind you to attach the defibrillation cable. The LifePak 300 has a feature called Code Summary. This feature begins storing critical events during a resuscitation attempt automatically from the moment you turn on the LifePak 300 and continues to update information until you turn the device off. To print the summary of critical events, push the Summary button located on the front panel. When it's done printing, you will see Summary Completed printed on the end of the strip. You can make as many copies as you want. Printing code summary will not erase the stored information or interfere with other operations of the unit. The information is retained in the device for 15 minutes after the power is turned off and remains for that time even if the main battery is removed. After 15 minutes, the code summary information is erased in preparation for its next use. This is the code summary critical event record format. The first section is an overview. There's a space to write the patient's name, and here is the date and time power was turned on. The total number of shocks delivered is next, followed by the total elapsed time from when the unit was turned on to when code summary was printed. The configuration number is a seven-digit number which represents the LifePak 300's configuration at the time code summary was printed. The LifePak 300 can be configured with several different options, and this number reflects which options were available. The operating instructions contains a key which explains what a particular number means. Lastly, there is a unique identification number, not shown here, that tells you which LifePak 300 produced the summary record. To the right of all this information is an area for your handwritten comments. Following the comment section is a chronological listing of all the stored critical events. For example, this is the check patient alert format. With each check patient alarm, the LifePak 300 records the date, time, and six seconds of patient ECG. This is the shock advisory format. With every patient ECG analysis, the LifePak 300 notes the time and date of the analysis and the shock or no shock recommendation. Following this information is the ECG tracing the LifePak 300 used to make its recommendation. Now the defibrillation format. Again, you have a space for the patient's name and whether the shock was delivered manually or in this case, the advisory mode. There's the date, the sequential number of the shock, time of energy delivery, and the number of joules delivered. Then you get three seconds of pre-shock ECG and six seconds of post-shock ECG. This information is printed for each shock. This is the recorder format. Each time the printer is used, the device stores six seconds of the patient's ECG starting from when the printer button was activated. This concludes an explanation of the code summary critical event record. The LifePak 300 can store up to 25 individual events with the accompanying patient ECG. In addition to the code summary documentation, you may want to record the patient's ECG during monitoring. To record, push the printer button. To stop the printer, push the printer button again. The printed ECG information is five seconds delayed from when it actually occurred in order to give you time to push the printer button. If your LifePak 300 is not supplied with a printer, an event button appears in the place of the printer button. Pushing the event button causes an event marker to appear on the C60 cassette tape for later review. Examples of events worth noting are when a pulse is first found or when the advanced life support team arrives on the scene. Now let's take a look at the LifePak 300's display messages and learn how to troubleshoot.
The LifePak 300 continuously monitors its connection to the patient. If the device has not been connected to the patient or has become disconnected from the patient, a connect electrodes message flashes and a check electrodes voice prompt occurs every 10 seconds. The LifePak 300 will only operate with the electrodes connected. If you see the connect electrodes display message, check the following three connection points. First, the electrode to patient adhesion. Make sure that the electrode is adhering to the patient's skin by pressing down firmly on the electrode and around its edges. The skin should be wiped dry and excessive patient chest hair should be shaved or clipped in the electrode placement areas before applying the electrodes. Second, the cable connector on the electrode. If disconnected, reconnect the electrodes. Third, the cable to device connection. Check the cable connection at the device and verify that it is secure. If after completing these three steps you still receive a check electrodes message, try replacing the electrodes with a new pair. Motion artifact is a term used to describe the ECG signal distortion created by patient motion. Motion artifact can inhibit analysis of ECG. If motion is detected during analysis, motion detected and stop motion messages alternately flash. If these messages appear, check to see that the patient is not moving and that no one is touching or moving the patient. If a patient is being transported in a vehicle, stop the vehicle prior to pushing the push to analyze button. If patient motion is ruled out, check for and reduce if possible sources of radio frequency interference such as high output radios, electric blankets, or close proximity to antennas. If motion occurs for less than 20 seconds, the LifePak 300 automatically resumes analysis once motion subsides. However, if motion occurs for more than 20 seconds, the device will revert back to the push to analyze screen. The LifePak 300 continuously assesses the patient's ECG signal for a potentially shockable rhythm. If a shockable rhythm is detected, a check patient message flashes on the display and a check patient voice prompt repeats every 10 seconds. If this message is displayed, check for absence of a pulse and breathing. If no pulse and no breathing, push the push to analyze control button. If silencing the audible prompt is desired, push the silence display button. The check patient audio tones are silenced for one minute and a symbol appears in the lower left corner of the display to remind you that the device is in a silenced condition. No other audio prompts are silenced during this minute, only the check patient alarm. The check patient alarm cannot be permanently silenced. Remember that when in the manual mode there are no check patient alarm capabilities. Battery voltage is continuously monitored by the LifePak 300. When the battery reaches low capacity, a low battery display message flashes continuously and a low battery voice prompt occurs. Simultaneously, a battery symbol appears on the lower left corner of the display. The LifePak 300 battery pack has been designed to provide some operating time after a low battery display message appears. However, this time may vary and should not be relied upon because battery age, level of prior maintenance, and temperature can adversely affect battery performance. While the low battery condition exists, a replace battery message may occur during defibrillator charging. The replace battery message indicates that the LifePak 300 battery pack is at such a low capacity level that the defibrillator is incapable of charging and delivering another shock. Once this message appears, the LifePak 300 will allow the shock to be delivered but prevent another defibrillator charge. This message may not appear before device shutdown because the defibrillator may go from the low battery state to shutdown without displaying replace battery.
If either of these messages is displayed, replace the battery immediately with a fully charged battery and recharge the depleted battery. The LifePak 300 is a battery operated device. It will not operate with a depleted battery even if the battery charger is connected. It will not operate off wall current. Always carry a properly maintained fully charged spare battery. To charge a battery, plug the AC charger into an acceptable active power outlet. The green light on the left indicates proper connection. Next, plug the charging cord into the back of the battery. The green light on the right indicates that the battery is being charged at a fast rate. When the green light on the right turns off, the battery is not necessarily fully charged. The battery should be left on for a minimum 16 hours to ensure full charge. Leaving the battery connected to the charger will not damage the battery. In fact, continuous charge is highly recommended. To remove the battery, lift the battery release latch and grasp the rear of the battery pack and slide to the rear. To install, push aside the protective flap on the carrying case and slide the battery pack forward until the battery latch snaps into place. The battery can be in the device while being charged. A battery charging or bat charge light located on the front panel indicates proper connection. Remember, the battery charger will not power the device. It is strictly a battery charger. The printer will not operate if the paper is missing, jammed, or if the recorder case is open. If you push the printer button when there is no paper, for example, a check printer message flashes. This display message will not affect device operation, including code summary critical event retention. To load the paper, pull upward on the front of the recorder case to open it. Push the back portion down into the case. Remove the empty paper spool and insert a new roll with the paper grid side up. Pull out a short length of paper and close the recorder case by pulling the back of the case up and in and pushing the front of the case back. Status of the cassette tape is monitored continuously by the LifePak 300. The message check tape flashes twice if the cassette tape is missing, jammed, or if the tape has been fully recorded on one side. Simultaneously, a tape symbol appears in the lower left corner of the display. This display message will not affect device operation. If you see the check tape display message, examine the tape through the tape door viewing window. If the tape is missing, jammed, or fully recorded, open the tape door by pushing the front release lever. To remove the tape, grasp the right side where there is an access well and lift it up and out. To install, place the cassette so that the exposed tape faces to the back of the device and the full reel is on the right. Make sure that the tape is fully seated onto the tape drive before closing the tape door. A tape symbol located on the top of the door reminds you of the correct orientation of the tape. A closed tape door display message flashes continuously if the tape door is open or ajar. If this message is displayed while the unit is in service, it will not affect operation of the device. However, the tape door should be closed immediately to protect the tape deck and the interior of the device from the environment. The LifePak 300 goes through a self-test procedure each time the device is turned on and after each defibrillator shock. If an internal fault is detected during this self-test, a service fault display message flashes twice and a service symbol in the form of a wrench appears in the lower left corner of the display. The unit may or may not be operational at this point depending on the severity of the fault. If you
you are attempting to resuscitate a patient, use another device if available. If another defibrillator is unavailable, you may wish to continue to use the device if possible, unless there is an obvious patient or operator safety hazard. If the service fault message is displayed, immediately remove the unit from service and contact a qualified service representative. The LifePak 300 and its batteries should be tested on a regular basis. Routine periodic testing and proper maintenance will help to ensure that this instrument remains in good operating condition and is ready for use when needed. It will also promote operator familiarity. The following information is a guideline for testing the functional and electrical safety of the defibrillator monitor. It does not replace the need for a full inspection by a qualified service representative. If the LifePak 300 fails to exhibit appropriate responses during testing, it should be checked by a qualified service representative. Testing should be accompanied by a thorough visual examination for cracks in the case and patient cable. Before you begin, remove the cassette tape and replace it with another tape designated specifically for testing. Since the LifePak 300 has no rewind capability, this avoids filling the tape with operational test procedure data and ensures that the original tape will be ready when the device is used on a patient. Turn the unit on. Wait briefly for the self-test procedure to complete and connect electrodes begins to flash. Ensure that the cassette tape is turning by peering in the observation window. Connect the cable to the physio control patient simulator. Press the patient simulator on button and make sure that the simulator is in a normal sinus rhythm or NSR. Push the push to analyze display button and immediately push the motion control button located on the patient simulator. Verify the motion detected display message. Allow analysis to resume and verify the no shock advised display message. Push the printer button and verify that the time, date, and heart rate information is correct. Check to see that there is enough paper in the recorder. Now place the simulator in ventricular fibrillation by pressing the VF button. Push the analyze button and wait until the unit is fully charged to 200 joules. Confirm that the low battery or service fault message or symbols are not displayed and push the shock button. Observe on the simulator the acceptable discharge indicator flashing. Turn the unit off. That concludes a basic testing of the LifePak 300. Don't forget to replace the original cassette tape with the wound portion of the tape on the right. After any testing, recharge the depleted battery before placing it back into service by plugging it into a charger. This sealed lead-acid battery functions best if continuously charged. If the battery cannot be continuously charged and it has not been used or recharged over the last 30 days, rotate it with a fully charged battery. Charge and store batteries in an area with ambient temperatures of approximately 60 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit because temperature extremes will damage the battery's performance. If cleaning is needed, use mild soap and a damp sponge or towel. Do not immerse any part of the unit in water and do not use alcohol, abrasive agents, or other solvents, as this may damage the unit. After every use, create a code summary critical event record. Don't forget that this information is erased 15 minutes after the device is turned off, so you must make a record before then. Discard used fast patch disposable defibrillation electrodes, including electrode sets that were open but not used, because they dry out in less than 24 hours. Remove the recorded cassette tape, label it, and forward to your medical control. Place a new blank cassette tape, or one that has been completely erased, in the deck with the full reel of tape on the right side of the deck. Replace the depleted battery pack with a fully charged, properly maintained battery and recharge the depleted battery. Do not wait for the low battery or replace battery display message to occur before recharging your batteries. Remember, it takes approximately 16 hours to recharge a depleted battery pack. 
recharge the spare battery if used. Clean the unit and examine the case and cables for breakage and immediately report damaged items. Verify that the defibrillation cable is attached to the unit and not the ECG monitoring cable so that the unit is properly prepared to be used in an arrest. The defibrillator cable can be identified by its black and red device connector versus the ECG monitoring cable's all black device connector. Coil both cables and store appropriately. Replace the defibrillation electrodes. At least two packets of defibrillation electrodes should be available at all times. This concludes our LifePak 300 in-service video. We hope you have found it informative. Remember, this in-service video only provides an overview, so you must familiarize yourself with the operating instructions manual for complete details. If you have any additional questions, please call your local sales representative or physio control at 1-800-426-8047 and ask for the LifePak 300 product specialist. Thank you.